Hey GED students, what we're going to look at today is an example of how really basic concepts like how we find in unit zero of the crash course will come up on the GED in some more complex examples. So let's take a look at these two from the advanced level practice of perfect squares and their roots. And we can see that, you know, we see a couple of roots here. I see a square root when you see this little radical this check mark house here and it has no number inside the check mark we just read that as a square root you just assume that the root here is a square but those aren't the only roots right now you know we can have a cube root a fourth root a fifth root we can have a half root of, i mean there's all kinds of roots we can have uh, but the only ones on the ged that i've seen anyway are square roots and cube roots so we won't panic about the rest but we will introduce this concept of a cube root so what's the difference you see the check mark house again but this time you see a number an index inside the little check mark that tells us what type of root it is okay so no number we assume square root but if we see a number in there it's that root so this is the third or cube root now before you panic and go oh my gosh you didn't even teach me this operation guys 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 no, but I taught you this idea of inverses. So remember, when we see square root of a number, we are thinking about the inverse of squaring. We're thinking what number squared would give me that number that we're talking about. So same thing with cube root. If I see cube root of a number, we're saying what number cubed would give me that number. So don't panic at the sight of an unfamiliar operation like this. <clears throat> Let's apply what we already know to be able to do that. Okay, so now that we got that down a little bit, let's try the math. So what am I saying here then? If it's a cube root, I'm saying what number cubed would give me whatever's inside of this radical. So in this case, negative 64. Now, a lot of you guys realize, well, if I want a negative, I bet it's a negative. But the question is negative what? And the most common answer that I'll get, just students, you know, just thinking off the top of their head, uh, guessing because they, you know, have a good feeling about it, is negative 8. A lot of students will tell me, well, hey, if I took negative 8 and raised it to the third power, I would get negative 64. So this answer must be negative 8. And I gotta say, I disagree, you guys. So it's okay to guess. It's okay to guess, it's okay to guess, it's okay to guess. I don't know how many times I said this in how many videos. It's okay to guess. But you better check, people. Don't be just guessing random things because you got a good feeling without checking. So let's see, what does negative eight cubed mean? It means negative eight times negative eight times negative eight. And though I agree with you that a negative times a negative times a negative would give me a negative because the two cancel, but then I'd have one left over. I don't agree with you that I'd get 64 from this because eight times eight is 64, but then I'd still have to multiply it by that third eight. Now, let me just write negative eight here so I'm not confusing. Okay, because negative eight times negative eight is positive 64. And then multiplying by that last negative eight, yeah, would give me a negative, but it would get me something a lot bigger than 64. Where are we at? Like 500 something, I think maybe 512. <clears throat> that not being the point. The point is negative eight is way too big of a guess. So you might say, well, what should I do? Well, you have one or two choices. You could memorize your perfect cubes. Or you can just guess and check. Like we saw negative eight was way too big. So we could guess, you know, a little smaller. I don't know. So let's try like, um, sorry, don't have my pen working here. Let's try like, I don't know, negative three cubed and see what happens. Well, negative three times negative three times negative three. Negative three times negative three is positive nine. And if I wanted to times that by negative three, I would get negative 27. A little too small, but I'm closer than I was before. So a little too small, let me try negative four. 
And some of you guys are like, Kate, you should have tried negative four first because this is an even number. And you guys know that even numbers make even numbers and odd numbers make odd numbers when we're multiplying. So negative four times negative four would be positive 16. Oops, I forgot my last negative. Times another negative four would give me negative, and what is that, 40 and 24? Yep, 64, and you might say, Kate, I'm not a ninja like you are. So then multiply it by hand, four times six is 24. Four, five, six, 64. So look at that, I guessed, but I checked. I guessed, but I checked, you guys. So what is the cube root of negative 64? It is negative four. Why? Because if I take negative four and I raise that whole thing, that's what I'm saying with the parentheses, to the third power, I would get negative 64. All right, lovely. But now, one more time, let's look at another common error. So we said this one was negative four. Now this one, students go, hey, square root this time, not cube root, Kate. I see a negative. The square root of negative 64 must be negative eight. I'm a brilliant genius. And I say, mm, you're wrong. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> In fact, if you tried to, this would be on the non-calculator section, okay? But if you tried to type in this expression on the GED calculator, you'd get a really interesting answer. You'd get an error. I'm gonna say that again. You'd get an error. Your calculator would start freaking out like, this is not math we know how to do. And that's because it's math that doesn't make sense in what we call the real number system. And the real number system is the only number system we're using here on the GED. So let me show you why. Let me just show you why instead of me just talking and talking. You know how much I love to talk. Let's think about it. If I take negative eight, and square it, or take negative eight and multiply it by itself, a negative times a negative is a, what is it guys? A negative times a negative? That's a positive. I wouldn't get negative 64, I'd get positive 64. And you might say, well, Kate, I could do negative eight times eight and I'd get negative 64. And I'd say, yeah, but that's not the definition of square root. In a square root, you know, we're saying what number times exactly itself, not like what number times its opposite, but what number times exactly itself would give me negative 64. Um, and the answer is nothing <laughs> because positive eight times positive eight is positive 64 and negative eight times negative eight is positive 64. There's no way I can take a number, multiply it by itself and get negative 64. So then what, is there just no answer? And yeah, <laughs> there's just no answer. So mathematically, what do we say when there's just no answer, at least with the number system we're using? Um, we say this is undefined. There's no answer. We have no definition for this. We have no number we've yet defined in order to give an answer to this question. And this is crucial, woo, 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 woo. Cause you won't see exactly this problem on the GED, but you will definitely could see something that where they asked you like, what value of X could make this expression undefined? And it's gonna be crucial for you to understand that if there's a negative, if we get a negative answer inside of a square root, so this whole thing is negative, then the expression is undefined. That is a GED concept. That is an application of square roots you will most likely see. And so you really gotta understand, not just have some things memorized here. All right, ooh, tricky one. Are you mad at me? I wouldn't blame you if you are. Go ahead, drop those questions in the comments. Tell me where I didn't make sense. Let's clarify this. Let's make sure it makes sense because not only does it apply to the GED with those undefined expressions, well, you're also gonna see this in your college classes. And guess what? In college, we're gonna go on to define new kinds of numbers that you haven't heard of before. We're gonna add to the real numbers with something called the imaginary numbers. And understanding this is going to be crucial to understanding that. All right, you guys, happy learning.